Hello friends, welcome you in this video tutorial. You are watching KK Java Tutorials. And in this video tutorial, we are going to learn how to create a custom immutable class in Java. So let's try to understand what is immutable class in Java. Immutable class, as the name suggests, is a class whose object can't be modified in any way once created. Once an object of immutable class is created and initialized, the content of any field of that object can't be changed in any way and returns uh, and remains same throughout the life of life of the object right if there are methods that uh, modifies the content uh, in some way then the new object is created uh, with the modified content and returned original uh, object does not change an example like a string in java is a, an immutable class uh, though there are methods within a string class which modify uh, the created uh, a string object you can see uh, in the code of a string class uh, that all uh, this type of methods or new of uh, new string is created with with the modified data and uh, returned other example of immutable class in java are all the wrapper classes for primitive types like integer long float character char uh, right character these all primitive uh, wrapper all uh, wrapper classes of primitive is immutable apart from that big decimal and big uh, integer are also immutable class in java right so let's see how we can uh, create a immutable class in java uh, so there are certain steps that are to be followed for creating an immutable class in java so first step says uh, methods of the class should not be overridden by the subclasses you can ensure by uh, making your class as final so your class should be final so that uh, uh, no other class can uh, um, create a subclass of it and that will not uh, try to change a state of object right now second step make all the fields final and private right if field is uh, if the field is of the uh, primitive type then its value can't be changed as it, as it is final right if field is holding a reference to another object then declaring that field as final means its reference can't be changed but uh, object can be changed right so if you declare a, a reference of mutable object as final then that reference can't be changed but uh, still that object can be changed so how we can uh, how we can uh, prevent those things we'll see uh, through an example having access modified as private for the fields ensure that fields are not accessed outside of the class so basically we are following the encapsulation by making all the fields as private now third step you have to follow and slice all the fields in constructor right now fourth don't provide setter method or any method that can change the state of the object only provide method that can access the value so only you need to specify the public getter method now fifth step in case any of the fields of the class holds reference to the mutable object uh, any change to the those objects should also not be allowed for that make sure that there are no methods within the class that can change those mutable objects means uh, no method can change any of the field content right now next point says don't share reference of the mutable object if any of the methods of your class return the reference of the mutable object then its content can be changed we'll see what is that now next point if any reference must be returned create a, create copies of your internal mutable object and return those copies rather than original object and uh, the copy you are creating uh, of the internal mutable object must be deep copy not a shallow copy now based on these facts let's try to see how we can create a immutable class in java now let's say you have a scenario uh, where uh, basically uh, you have a map let's say you have a, a concurrent hash map right and there you have a key as a employee right and value as a string so a string is so you don't need to think about the value so here basically when you want to retrieve a corresponding entry based on the key provided key then you will have to you will have a gate method right and gate method you pass the key and you get the corresponding value right now let's say uh, now this code is uh, getting deployed on the multi-threaded environment 
So multi-thread environment that, that, that there is possibility once you add this key value pairs, right? So here key is the employee object and once you add all those key value pairs and after certain time some other threads comes and changes the value of e1 right then corresponding key right corresponding value right which belongs to the key e1 will not you will not be able to retrieve let's see how it happens and that's the reason we should make employee class as immutable right so this is the class which we have followed the all the rules so first of all we have made this class as final so that no class can subclass it and that will not try to try to change the state of object now all the fields we have declared as private and final right so as we know that once private means we are following the encapsulation so that nobody can access this field outside of the class final means this is a blank final variable so when you declare a final instance variable then this instance variable you will have to initialize within the constructor so if i delete the constructor then you'll get an error saying that so the blank final field salary may not have been initialized so this is throwing for the uh, th this is throwing error for the salary but same error same error applies for the all the blank final variable that's the reason you need to create the you need to initialize this blank final variable in the uh, constructor itself now you need you don't need to provide the public setter method only you need to specify the public getter method even tools is also clever once uh, you uh, declare all the fields as final then tool even will not allow you to generate the public setter method right so if i go to the right click and source and here getters and if i select all and generate this will generate only the public getter method here you can see but if you make any field or all the fields as non-final if you remove the final keyword then that, that will generate the setter method as well right now uh, as uh, as we know that this employee class we have made as a key in the uh, hashing data structure and that's the reason i have overridden uh, basically equals and hash code method that's the basically equals and hash code con contract we will have to follow for the hashing data structure right and how we can generate equals and hash code method it's very easy to do that right click over here go to the source and here you have option basically generate uh, hash code and equals method right so it's easy to do that now come back to the client program here uh, now let's run this program everything uh, that will seems to be good so here what happened uh, we have added key value pairs four key value pairs key is the e1 e2 e3 e4 and value is the string so this is the let's say department name now we call entry set this will return the set of entry and set of entry we have iterated and just we are printing the key value right from the and finally uh, we are printing the key e1 so we have overridden to two string method so this will print the state of object in nice format now we are trying to retrieve the uh, value corresponding to key e1 right so that's the thing and we are successfully retrieve over here without any problem right now what i'll do so as we know that in by making uh, uh, this class as immutable uh, here if you, you can you could observe these three uh, like integer a string and big decimal these are the basically immutable class so not a problem but this is a mutable class right date is your java dot java dot util dot date is a, a mutable class here we have made it final miss this reference is final you cannot assign another object to this dob but still this can be changed and we are returning the same reference over here that's the mistake we have done so what just let me show you how i am telling you the mistake this is the mistake if i do e1 dot let's say get dob and this is a mutable object so we have a lot of setter methods let's say set time and here i am gonna specify some time random time right and let's see uh, after doing show if i run this application then you'll see key will be changed and corresponding value we are not able to retrieve right so key here you can see date of birth i have changed so if you compare with the date of birth earlier what we have added over here e1 and date of birth was 4th feb 1986 so here earlier it was 4th feb 1986 but now it has been changed august uh, april 15 1970 right so how we can prevent this kind of problem right so let's say uh, this code is deployed in the multi-threaded environment and uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, other thread comes uh, when you try to retrieve this uh, entry by uh, specifying this key and before that some other thread comes and that's uh, make change 
uh, in your uh, this key class object right then you will be not able to retrieve that uh, corresponding value right to prevent that one make this class completely immutable so how we can do that so here instead of returning the same reference right what you can do you can return the defensive copy what do you mean by defensive copy means you can create an object of date right object of date and uh, here you can retrieve the date from this dob right which is getting in slice within the constructor and that is getting stored over here right so what you can do dob dot sorry uh, what you can do dob dot get time right so you are not returning the same reference but you are completely going to return the uh, new copy of it right so this is also called defensive copy now if i run the same application then you will see uh, we are able to retry because key not has been changed now even though uh, even though someone try to change uh, this object right by calling this uh, basically setter method is still uh, still basically uh, while creating the object itself when this is getting in slice itself that dob we are extracting and putting into this date and that's the reason basically uh, uh, this uh, modified date is not getting reflected into my key and we are able to uh, retrieve the corresponding uh, value of this key and here you can also observe key is not getting changed now now uh, still date of birth is saying 4th 5 1986 and what uh, key we had added earlier right so that's the way basically you can make your class completely immutable if your class contain a reference of mutable object then instead of returning the same reference to the caller in the getter method you can return the defensive copy or cloned copy you can say right so that's the thing i wanted to discuss in this video tutorial next video tutorial we'll see some more in-depth concept about Im immutable class itself we'll see here is a employee is the custom immutable class let's say you have a uh, this class contains the reference of mutable object uh, custom mutable object let's say address then how we can manage that one right and if your class contains uh, say, let's say array list link list or any collection which is basically mutable in that case if you have to uh, again you will have to return the uh, basic basically cloned copy so if array list even has a clone method right so you can call the clone method or you can return the cloned uh, copy instead of returning the same copy right so that's all I wanted to discuss in this video tutorial. In next video tutorial, we'll see some more concept, uh, and finally we'll see what are the advantages and disadvantage, disadvantages of uh, immutable class in Java. So that's all I have in this video tutorial. I hope you uh, uh, learn everything what we have discussed in this video tutorial. This code I'm going to check in on the GitHub and GitHub location you may get from the video description part itself. If you really like this video, then hit on the like button. Don't forget to share and subscribe my YouTube channel.